Hey Loki, I have a new package arriving today that I'm really excited about. Well, evidently he's not so excited, but I'm thrilled to share with you my Mega 65 assembly video. Hey, this is Retro Combs, and I am thrilled today to share with you my Mega 65 assembly video and first use. We're going to take a look at the entire Mega 65 process as I go from open the box to assembly to first use. It's going to be really exciting. So first, an introduction. My very first computer was this wonderful device, the Commodore VIC-20. You see, I'm sporting the Commodore VIC-20 shirt. I purchased this, this computer about 40 years ago from a Sears catalog store in a town of about 3,000. So I waited for this device to arrive at my door after spending some time making money mowing yards so that I could be the first in my community to own a personal computer. And what a wonderful opportunity that was. The Commodore VIC-20 was the perfect first computer for me. You can imagine the excitement I had when this device arrived at my door, well, not at my door, but at the catalog store. I take the drive up. I have my mom drive me up there. I'm 15 at the time. I grab that device, I bring it home, I open the box, and I am just enamored by this device. Now, I was kind of an electronics and gadget geek the whole way growing up. I would take things apart, much to my parents' chagrin. So when this came, I just opened the box, lots of excitement, plugging it in, learning the program, saving programs on data set. It was a blast. And so I haven't really ever experienced that kind of excitement about a computer until recently. Throughout the years, I was a Commodore fan. I went through the Commodore VIC-20. From the VIC-20, I moved up to the Commodore 128. And finally, at the tail end of my Commodore days, I owned an Amiga. So 30 years later, that brings us to a modern remake of a prototype Commodore computer, the Commodore 65. The Commodore 65 was kind of found in warehouses during the liquidation of Commodore back in 1994, and they found about 50 to 200. The, the uh, sources are a bit sketchy on that. Was it 50? Was it 200? So there's a huge story about the Commodore C65, and I'm not going to cover that story in this video. I would encourage you to check out the Wikipedia page to get you started. There's a lot of great resources. Because the C65 wasn't readily available, very few people were able to experience that machine. And again, Commodore never released the machine, so it was never meant for the mass public. So thanks to the folks over at the Mega Museum of Electronics, Games, and Art, link down below in the video description, they decided to go on this journey of recreating the Commodore C65 for a modern era, for us to take a look at what could have been the 21st century realization of the C65 heritage, a complete 8-bit computer running around 40 times faster than a C64 while being highly compatible. C65 design, mechanical keyboard, HD output, SD card support, Ethernet, extended memory, and other features increase the fun without spoiling the 8-bit feel. Hardware designs and software are all open source. Now that open source is what really makes this project special. But for now, the only thing that consumers can get that's close to the Mega 65 is the Mega 65 Developers Kit or Dev Kit, which I have right here in front of me. So let's talk about the dev kit. And unfortunately, it too is not available when you're seeing this video. There were only a hundred copies of the dev kit. The dev kit provides early access to hardware and software so developers can begin programming with the hope that new programs and games, utilities, and productivity are available when the Mega 65 is finally released. Again, hopefully in 2021. So what is in this thing? It has a Xilinx Atrix A7 200T FPGA that functions as a 40 megahertz 8-bit processor to support both C65 and C64 modes. Yes, it has C64 mode support, much like the Commodore 128. What's great about the FPGA that's built into this is it has more than one core, which means the Mega can actually emulate, and it's not really true emulation, it's a hardware recreation of processors, but it can, we're going to say for the uh, for, for this video, we're going to say emulate, it can emulate more than the C64, C65. You can add additional cores. This 
FPGA could also become an Amiga computer if somebody were to build that core. But we can store multiple cores in here, and hopefully others will begin to develop cores for this device to make it even more fun to use. Some of the other great things we get is we get this wonderful Cherry MX mechanical switch keyboard. Listen to this. This is the best keyboard that a Commodore computer has ever had. We also get a refurbished three and a half inch floppy. Yes, a modern computer being delivered with a refurbished three and a half inch floppy. I guess I had to go refurb because it's hard to find a three and a half inch floppy. It comes in this beautiful acrylic laser cut case. Now the laser cut case does not mimic entirely what this Commodore C65 looks like as you saw earlier in our video. It does also include a numbered plate so that my dev kit is numbered. Again, there were only a hundred of those. And believe it or not, there is a working cartridge port on the back and other IO ports that make this unique over devices such as the C64, the C64 Mini, and the VIC-20. Those are FPGA devices as well, but they don't include the IO ports that make the Mega 65 a special device. So what that means is you can use some of your original cartridges, some of your original floppy disk drives using the IEC line that's built into this, as well as modern devices such as an SD to IEC or a Pi 1541. That will all work on this device, making it more like an original Commodore computer. And as my viewers and readers of my blog know, I really love retro computing, but I like that, what I call a modern spin on it. While I love original hardware, I love new hardware that harkens back to those old days. I like to add things like Raspberry Pis and Arduinos. Just take a look at my Tedwino project video, which is down there below. You definitely will see that that is a modern spin on retro computing. And I love that, a modern spin on retro computing. That's retro combs for you right there. So how did I get my hands on this device? Well, back in June, there was a call or a release that there would be a hundred versions or a hundred copies of the Mega 65 dev kit available. I usually am not the one who's fortunate to get in that window and get a device when I'm waiting in line for a limited number of quantities. However, I snuck in got one of these on order, and then the long wait to November occurred. And on November 24th, they started shipping. I received mine the day after Thanksgiving. It was Black Friday, and boy, what a great time. The holidays were here. I had some time off. I had a long weekend. It was the perfect time for the Mega 65 dev kit to arrive. Okay, well, you don't want to hear any more of my story. You want to see me open the box, assemble, and turn on the Mega 65 dev kit for the first time. So let's get started. Okay, and here's my VIC-20 sign as an homage to my early days of Commodore computing. And here's our shipping slip from Trends. And uh, just to prove that it did come from Germany, here's my export sticker on the box from UPS. We're going to open up the box now and find inside, that's right, shipping peanuts and some catalogs and brochures from Trends Electrics. And what are we going to do with all these shipping peanuts? We'll find a place for them as we unpack everything in the box and some rogue shipping peanuts. There they are again. Let's go ahead and get this big larger box out of here and then we'll clear everything else out, set it aside and start on this first package, which appears to be our power adapter. These are the international plugs and here is the actual power source. Let's pick out the US 110 switch we need and oh, here's what the European model looks like. Okay, we'll put that back in the bag, snap that into place and we are ready for power in the United States for our Mega 65. Here is that floppy that's refurbished and it is an Alps Electric. Man, I haven't seen that name in forever, Alps Electric. And this is a three and a half inch floppy disk drive that we'll be using. I do not have a three and a half inch floppy disk. I'm gonna to have to purchase one of those. This is the USB cable we can use to interface the Mega 65 with a modern computer like a Linux, Mac, or PC. These are all of our supplemental cables. We'll keep those in the bag for now. Inside this box appears to be our acrylic case, including access to the developer website. So we'll have access to files and developer information. We also have this package of small materials to help put the case together, including an SD card. This is our serial number plate. I have 00261, which is based on there being about 200 of these originally. So I'm number 61 
And here are the acrylic pieces for the case. We'll move those. And here is a listing of everything included in German. And finally, we come up to this keyboard. The keyboard is a Cherry MX switched keyboard. It's a very nice keyboard. I was really surprised. It's heavy. It looks good, but also it includes these wonderful Commodore keycaps, just like you would find on an original Commodore computer, which is one of the things that makes this so much better than something like Vice, where you use a regular standard keyboard and have to figure out what the keys are. They're not all the same. Here is our motherboard, the Mega 65 Development Kit motherboard. And this includes our FPGA, as well as all the other hardware we need for this device to act like a Commodore 65. Okay, let's go ahead and summarize this a little bit. First of all, we open the box to find all of our components that were shipped from Germany. We break out all the boxes, we stack them nicely, and then we start to sort through each of them. But before we do, we need to load the Mega 65 Developer Kit assembly video. Thank you, Mega folks, for that video. It was extremely helpful and helped me figure out where all these parts and pieces go, including these teeny tiny pieces, which you need to be very careful with. They're in bags including these floppy disk posts and spacers that did not fit properly. Next, we mount the FPGA motherboard to the bottom of the acrylic case. We have these nice 3D printed end caps that'll help us put the case together. And then we play a little floppy disk cable origami and bend this thing so that it'll fit underneath the floppy when assembled. With the floppy cable already, we attach it to the motherboard and the power to the floppy drive. As you can see here, we've got the cable connected. We've yet to connect the power. This is the keyboard that's connected to the bottom of the acrylic case using some screws. And this is the keyboard cable. That was pretty easy to put it. It only goes one way. And here's our handy dandy reset. And they even include the reset button in red. And we see the back of the FPGA board and the acrylic case coming together. Here are the sides. Now you see where those 3D printed pieces come into play. Here we are attaching the USB cable so that we can interface with the FPGA later. This is my developer kit number 00261. I'm very proud of my 61 number. 
We'll use these sticky dots to prominently display my 00261 number. Here you can see the bottom of the board and everything shoved into the acrylic case. Here is our cartridge adapter, but look at those little feet. Those little feet come with the dev kit. And here is a mistake. I did not get this screw. We'll get that later. And here's our SD card that includes software and everything we need to get started. Here it is plugged into the back and it acts like a 1541 when we access it. Here is the completed Mega 65 in all its beauty. Doesn't it look great? And here's some more dust that got caught on the inside. You gotta clean this thing really well before you assemble it. With everything assembled, I plug in the power adapter and the HDMI cable and I connect it to my HDMI portable monitor. Let's give this thing a shot. Okay, here we go. Power on for the first time. <gasps> I got it. It's on. It's on. Ah! Okay, there you have it. There is my open the box, there is my assembly, and there is my first turn on of the Mega 65 dev kit. And I've got to tell you, I'm more excited than ever to dive into what this machine can do. So I'll tell you, you want to save your money because you are going to want a Mega 65 when these things are released. Again, hopefully in 2020. So start saving your dollars now. We don't know what the cost was. The dev kit was pretty pricey and we all understood that. As part of purchasing the dev kit, we knew we were backing the project so that more of you could get an affordable Mega 65. So save those coins and get ready for next year. So what's next you ask? Or maybe you didn't ask. Maybe it's just me hearing voices in my head. Again, I'll be looking at the device from a user's perspective and begin preparing content to help you as a new or better yet a returning Commodore fan, get back into your love of Commodore style computers because the Mega 65 is at its soul a Commodore computer. I can't stress that enough. It just feels like a Commodore computer. And speaking of my blog, be sure to check out the companion blog post for this video. I've got more thoughts on the Mega 65 dev kit along with a few extra tips. You're gonna to wanna to check that out. I hope you enjoyed sharing this exciting time with me as I went through and opened the Mega 65. I really did feel like that 15 year old again, and it just brought back some great memories, some great feelings. And again, that whole notion of exploration is out there in front of me. I get to now play with the successor to the Commodore 65, the C65 or Mega 65, and just have fun again with computing. It's not just a device for business. It's not just utilities. I get to sit here and have fun with this thing while the rest of you wait for a Mega 65. I'm sorry you have to wait as long as you do. And that concludes this episode of Retro Cones. Retro Cones, out.